Hello, Windows Analysis. We explore the Windows universe, performance, hidden settings, history, hacks, and updates. If you like understanding your system, stay tuned. Today, we are diving deep into the silicon heart of your PC because there is a massive battle brewing under the hood. So let's break down why your next computer choice might just be the most important one you've ever made. You know, for decades, pretty much as long as I can remember, this was the question. The heavyweight title fight of the PC world, right? Team Blue versus Team Red. This rivalry didn't just define an era. For a lot of us, it really was the entire PC industry. But here's the thing. That whole epic rivalry, it was always built on one single shared foundation, the x86 architecture. That was the one rule everyone played by. Well, that rule book is being completely ripped up. What if the real fight isn't between two brands anymore? but between two totally different ideas about how a processor should even think. So how did we even get here? And, you know, more importantly, where is all this headed? Here's what we're going to cover. We'll look at the reigning king, the scrappy new challenger, how this whole fight is playing out right now on Windows, and what it all means for you. Okay, so to really get what a big deal this is, we first have to, you know, pay our respects to the long reigning champion, and make no mistake, for over 40 years, x86 has been the absolute undisputed king of personal computing. I mean, it was born back in the late 70s. It totally rode the wave of the 90s PC boom and just cemented its dominance in everything from our desktops to massive data centers. And, you know, being the king comes with some serious perks. We're talking a massive army of software and hardware developers on your side, building this ecosystem that's, well, it's almost impossible to challenge. So what's the secret sauce for x86's long reign? Well, it all comes down to a philosophy called CISC, or Complex Instruction Set Computer. The idea back then was actually pretty brilliant. Make life easier for programmers by giving them these really powerful single commands that could kick off a whole chain of complex operations inside the chip itself. But while x86 was busy conquering all of our desks, a, a silent challenger was taking over a completely different universe, the one that lives in our pockets. And that challenger is ARM. And after decades of dominating mobile, it is now coming for the PC's throne. And this slide just perfectly lays out the difference. ARM's philosophy is the total opposite of x86. It's called RISC, that's Reduced Instruction Set Computer. The whole idea here is to make the processor's job as simple as humanly possible. So instead of a few really complex instructions, you get tons of incredibly simple ones. And what does that lead to? Smaller, less complex chips that just sip power instead of guzzling it. Okay, to really make this click, let's use a coffee analogy. Think of x86 as one of those fancy espresso machines with one big complicated button that just says, make coffee. You press it and it does the whole shebang, grinds the beans, tamps them down, heats the water, pulls the shot. ARM, on the other hand, is more like a manual setup. You got separate, simple buttons. Get cup, add water, heat. Now, it might seem like more steps, but each one of those individual steps is incredibly fast and, this is the crucial part, incredibly energy efficient. Now, for years, pretty much everyone thought that ARM's efficiency meant you had to give up raw power. You know, a fair trade for a phone, sure, but not for a real computer. And then, an earthquake just shook the entire industry. Apple launched its M-series chips for Macs, all built on ARM. And suddenly, an ARM chip wasn't just efficient anymore. It was terrifyingly powerful, absolutely crushing many of its x86 rivals while barely even breaking a sweat. Apple basically proved that the entire game had changed. The new metric that mattered, the new benchmark, wasn't just raw speed anymore. It was performance per watt. Who could deliver the most horsepower for the least amount of energy? And as you can see right here, ARM didn't just open up a little gap, it created a massive canyon. This seismic shift forced everybody, and I mean especially Microsoft, to take ARM very, very seriously. And that brings us right to today's battlefield, our own Windows PCs. This war of ideas is no longer some theoretical debate. It is happening right now on the machines we use every single day. And honestly, the case for Windows on ARM is seriously compelling. We are talking about laptops with battery life that can genuinely last over 20 hours, an instant on experience that feels just like picking up your phone. And because they run so cool, we're seeing these beautiful, sleek, powerful laptops with no fans at all. I mean, zero noise. And for your everyday stuff, the native apps like Office and your web browser, the performance is already fantastic. 
but, and believe me, this is a big but, it is not a perfect world. Not yet. The great wall that ARM still has to climb is software compatibility. You have to remember, decades of Windows programs were all built for x86. To run them on an ARM machine, they have to go through what's called an emulation layer. Think of it like a real-time translator. And for a lot of apps, especially high-performance games or specialized professional software, that translation can be slow, a little clunky, and sometimes pretty inconsistent. So with this new challenger right at the gates, does the old king just roll over and hand over the crown? Absolutely not. Intel and AMD have seen the writing on the wall, and they are launching an aggressive, all-out counterattack. I mean, listen to this quote from AMD. This is nothing short of a declaration of war. They are publicly saying that this whole idea of x86 being inefficient is an old, outdated myth. And that when you look at the whole picture, performance, compatibility, and now efficiency, ARM offers no real advantage. Wow, them's fighting words. And look, it is not just talk. The really crucial point here is that the pressure from ARM has forced x86 to evolve faster than ever before. Both Intel and AMD are now building chips with these hybrid architectures, using powerful performance cores for the heavy lifting and super efficient efficiency cores for background tasks, which, and this is the ironic part, is a design philosophy that was pioneered by ARM in the first place. The gap, it's definitely closing. But here's the twist, and this might be the most fascinating part of this whole saga. If x86 is still so great, so competitive, why are companies like AMD reportedly developing their own ARM chips behind the scenes? Well, it's a classic case of hedging your bets, right? They're defending their x86 kingdom with everything they've got in public, while quietly preparing for a possible ARM-powered future in private. Okay, so, with all this back and forth, all this clashing of ideas and corporate strategy, what does any of this actually mean for you? Let's break down how this war is going to impact your next big tech purchase. As of right now, the choice is actually clearer than you might think. It really comes down to what kind of user you are. Are you a hardcore gamer who needs every single frame, a video editor compiling massive 4K projects, or maybe someone who just loves building and tweaking your own custom rig? Then yeah, x86 is still your undisputed king. It offers that raw power and near universal software compatibility. But are you a student who needs a laptop to survive a full day of classes, or a professional who lives on the road and values silence and portability more than anything else? Well then, the extreme efficiency and all-day battery of ARM is your new champion. But just when you thought this whole two-way battle for the future of your computer was complicated enough, there's a third player quietly stepping into the ring. It's called RISC-V. Now, like ARM, it's based on that same super-efficient RISC philosophy, but it has one game-changing difference. It's completely open source. No licensing fees, no single company in control. Literally anyone can build a RISC-V chip. It is a true wild card that could completely upend the rules of this war in the years to come. The battle for the heart of your PC, it has only just begun. And that's it for today's analysis. If you liked it, subscribe, leave a like and a comment, enjoy tinkering, and see you in the next Windows analysis video.